As the second half of the 19th century rolled along, highwaymen in the West had been robbing stagecoaches for over 50 years. There had been over 5,000 cases of stagecoach robberies reported during this century, and they mainly occurred around the area where gold shipments crossed trading routes. In my previous videos about the Wild West, we touched upon Black Bart, who held up at least 28 stagecoaches in Northern California. Sheriff Henry Plummer led a double life. He was not only a sheriff, the protector of his town, but the leader of his gang of road agents called the Innocents as well. And Plummer used intelligence he'd received as a sheriff to pick out the right stagecoaches to rob near the gold mines of Montana. Henry Plummer wasn't really a person that fit the criteria of an outlaw. He was born in Maine and at the age of 19 during the California Gold Rush, he traveled to the gold fields of California in order to acquire his own small fortune. Settling in the small town of Nevada City, there were lots of men passing town, seeking their own fortune and riches. Here he met another man with whom he established the Empire Bakery of Nevada City. Through his bakery, Henry Plummer actually did acquire a bit of gold and managed to purchase his own ranch and mine. After three years of operating the bakery and becoming a well-known figure of the town, he was elected as its marshal. During his time as a marshal, he became infatuated with a married woman, Lucy Vedder, and he didn't hide it. Her husband, John Vedder, went looking for Plummer to clear things up. When Vedder came across Plummer, the latter shot him on sight. Plummer was subsequently arrested and charged with murder. While Plummer claimed self-defense, he was sentenced to 10 years in San Quentin, but was released four years later after friends and supporters of his managed to get him a pardon due to the claim that he suffered from consumption, particularly from tuberculosis, and did not have long to live. The next time Plummer came to attention was near Washu, Nevada, after he joined a gang of bandits that preoccupied themselves with holding up Wells Fargo stagecoaches. One of these holdups didn't go so well for Plummer, as the barrel of his gun fell off during the holdup. The driver of the stagecoach managed to escape and could identify Plummer to the authorities, though they lacked evidence to convict him. He returned to Nevada where he killed a man in a dispute over a prostitute and was once again jailed, but this time he escaped. He went on the run and traveled up north to the border between Washington and Idaho and settled in Lewiston where he organized a small gang of highwaymen around him. The next year and a half the bandits terrorized the surrounding trade routes until they were driven out by a gang of vigilantes. Around that time, we're talking 1863, gold was found near Bannock, Montana. Thousands of fortune seekers, miners and whatever have you traveled towards Bannock and its surrounding towns. And as you can guess, Plummer decided to try his luck and traveled eastward. It was in Bannock that he formed the gang of highwaymen he called the Innocents. It happened to be that this move was ideal for the gang's finances. Surrounding cities of Bannock were rich and stagecoaches filled with gold and other valuables often traveled over the trading routes close by. Now Plummer got in a fight with a friend over a mutual love and killed him in a crowded saloon. While he was arrested, he was acquitted as the townsfolk of Bannock testified as witnesses that Plummer acted in self-defense. Using his charm and wits, Plummer quickly managed to capture the trust of the inhabitants and it didn't take long for him to be elected as sheriff once again. As the sheriff, Plummer was kept up to date of the stagecoach's travel schedule and the contents. He would use password signals and other secret ways of communicating to his cronies in order to get the innocents to rob these stagecoaches. And highwayman activity increased rapidly after Plummer got elected as sheriff. Some witnesses identified Plummer as part of the gang and though more and more people started to suspect that Plummer was involved with the gang of bandits, little did they know he was actually their leader. In December 1863, a mob of 300 men captured George Ives, an innocent member, and after a quick trial he was hanged. Two days later, a vigilante committee was formed and in January, two more men were hanged. More and more people came forward talking about who they thought 
were members of the Innocent Gang. And while Plummer wasn't mentioned that much at first, more people started to realize Plummer wasn't the protective sheriff they thought he was. On the 10th of January, 1864, a group of vigilantes captured Henry Plummer together with two of his top lieutenants and deputy sheriffs, Buck Stinson and Ned Ray. That same day, all three men were hanging from the beams of an unfinished building. It would take less than a month for the vigilantes to finish their job. By February, 30 men had been hung and only a few had fled as quick as they could in order to evade capture. Henry Plummer and his gang of innocents are definitely among the great tales of the Wild West. There are many more stories of outlaws and highwaymen that became folk heroes or villains of the Wild West, but I'll leave those for another time. Thank you for watching this video and is there a person or event from the Wild West that you would like to know more about and perhaps see a video of? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel. See you next time.